It's the most important game of the World Cup campaign so far for England. It is against Panama. It is do or die. Win this. And well, it all comes down to the last game against Belgium. Lose this. We are out of the World Cup after just two games. Draw it. Well, it's looking unlikely and it means that we'd have to rely on Panama's game against Tunisia when we take on Belgium. And I don't really want to be doing that. Don't want to be relying on other teams. We have to win these next two games just to confirm our spot in the round of 16. If we want to go into the late stages of the World Cup, we are certainly going to have to dig deep. I hope those lads have been listening to a bit of Skinner and Badil. Three lines on his shirt. We can do this. Got the faith. We need the likes of Harry Kane scoring those goals, getting into that form that we've seen him and playing for Spurs, we need Raheem Sterling bombing down that left side, using that pace and that agility, weaving in and out. We need Eric Dyer commanding that central midfield and at the back, we need John Stones finally reaching that potential of his and the experience of Gary Cahill getting stuck in. And we need Jack Butland focused as ever. This is one of the, uh, the biggest games, I can certainly feel it. That's been played on FIFA 18 this year. I mean, Panama certainly haven't got off to the best of starts in the World Cup this year. Losing 3-0, conceding three goals against Belgium in that first game. Hopefully there'll be a few nerves ahead of this one against us. For England then, you'll notice I have changed the formation to the 4-3-3. It's the same formation that I used in my Manchester United career. It's the formation I kind of know best on FIFA this year. So I'm hoping it's going to work and it's going to pay off for us in this game. This must win game against Panama. Pinedo starts in goal for Panama. Don't really know of him to be honest. But if he's conceded three goals already. I'm hoping that's going to work in our favour. And that Harry Kane is going to bag a goal or two in this game. They do have Perez and Torres up top in this 4-4-2. Come on England. Here is Eric Dyer then. Deli Ali, who's sitting in a much deeper role than he did in the first game against Tunisia in central midfield and can play there here is Rose now Dyer back out wide to Raheem Sterling who did really well after coming off the bench to replace Rashford it's him looking for Deli Ali, getting himself into a really good position there here is Eric Dyer now it's Henderson looking for the run of Kane it's all just one way at the moment it's all England Dyer over the top for Kane Feeds off Deli Ali is in here. Deli Ali. Oh, what a save from Panido. Should be 1 0. But it's uh, encouraging stuff from England. Decent effort. It's going to be a corner. Oh, no. Torres. Oh, I had to do it. Had to do it. Stone sticks his foot out, concedes the free kick. If I hadn't done that, he would have been one on one with Butland. They'd probably be celebrating right about now. And they do have a free kick. It is a dangerous position. It is a goal scoring position. But how good are their free kick takers? I'm not too sure. He's going to take this. He's going to have a go as well. And it's wide. Butland's not worried one bit. Goal kick then. Here is Raheem Sterling. And it's Danny Rose. Space now for Kane. Kane over the top for Jesse Lingard. Oh, hits the crossbar. Deli Ali also hits the crossbar. Unbelievable. How have we not made it 1 0 there? Lingard's looping header, keeper way off his line. I'm not sure where the keeper was. No, no man's land. And then Deli Ali's follow up as well. Couldn't even find the back of the net. And now Panama. It's Torres. It's gone for goal. And he's scored. It's 1 0 Panama. Where on earth did that just come from? It's an absolute shocker. That's two long range efforts now that Jack Butland has conceded in the World Cup. Just madness, it really is. One moment we're up the other end, attacking their goal. Two looping headers, which should have found that back of the net. And then the next, Panama at our end, making it 1 0. Here is Jordan Henderson, going like the clappers now, England. Henderson over the challenge there failed to do anything of it and now here come Panama again they're on a high 
and Harry Kane's gone down. Harry Kane holding on to his knee here. The referee stopping play. This does not look good. Harry Kane, our captain, is going to have to go off. Harry Kane, you can see, goes into that challenge, gets tackled to the ground. Maybe a jar of the knee there, or a clash of knees. He's going to have to go off anyway, our captain, to be replaced by Jamie Vardy. Just goes from bad to worse here. We're a goal down to Panama. A team on paper that we really should be beaten. And now Harry Kane has gone and got injured. Here is Jamie Vardy now. Great first touch. Jamie Vardy with an instant impact almost. Pinedo with another top save for Panama. It's going to be another corner. Here we go. Henderson swings it in. It's in. Deli Alley. Deli Alley turns on the ball. Hits it. It's Sterling. It's Vardy. It's 1 1. He does make an instant impact just come on the pitch and he scored our second goal of the competition scored that much needed equaliser hopefully we can push on here now and put that first goal that we conceded behind us and really go for the win because we really need it good goal as well from that corner here is Henderson then I was going to give it to Sterling, but look at the space here for Eric Dyer. Well out of position. Dyer over the top for Jesse Lingard. Jalings makes it 2 1. Finally, a bit of breathing space for England. Jesse Lingard bringing the dab to Russia. Let's have it. Not quite sure what Eric Dyer was doing there, but it's a good assist in the end and a good powerful header up into the roof of the net Jesse Lingard lucky to not be taken out there by that boot that stray boot in the air good goal we got our tails up now England things are looking good here is Godi now for Panama Godi's gonna go for goal oh my words he almost found the back of the net he almost made it 2-2 with another long range effort Butland beaten oh look how close that was well, finally, Whew, let's take a breather. It is half time. It's Jesse Lingard's headed goal that is the difference here. 2 1 then so far after 45 minutes to England. We need this. Here is Deli Alley now through the middle for Jamie Vardy. Deli Alley over the top looking for, oh, looking for Henderson. And oh, Jamie Vardy's effort took a deflection. Penido quick to it though. Ever since Jamie Vardy came on the pitch to replace the injured Harry Kane, things seem to be a lot more lively in that final third. Things are a lot more quicker. Here he is now again on the ball. Jamie Vardy hits it. <gasps> Had the keeper beat as well. Here is Danny Rose to Eric Dyer. Here we go. Deli Alley out wide. Space for England now. Playing with confidence. Here is Jordan Henderson. Hits it. Henderson again. It's 3-1. 3-1. And surely now that goal will see us go into that final game against Belgium with the hope of making round of 16 here in Russia. Jordan Henderson hit it, took the deflection, fell to his feet again. And he didn't think twice. He just struck it. And thankfully, found the top left-hand corner. It's 3-1 then. What a turnaround for England here. Wow. Oh, off goes Gary Cahill then. It's time to bring on Harry Maguire. I'm going to start using some of the, uh, the other players available. Jesse Lingard. Oh, what a ball that is for Jamie Vardy to make it for. Oh, keeper saves. Pineda has had some decent saves in this game. Godey. Going to watch out for that lethal left foot of his. Gomez. Great play here from Panama. Plenty of room. And it's 3-2. It's 3-2 just like that. He's going to go pick up the ball with just a few minutes remaining of this game. Oh dear God. We need to hold on to this. We need this win. It took a deflection there. I think it 
Oh, bounced off Danny Rose's chin. 3-2 then. Oh, we've done it. England have done it. They thought it was all over. Not just yet. Not just yet. It's finished 3-2 to England here against Panama. Shame we had to concede that second goal. But Jesse Lingard's headed goal in the uh, just before half time really pushed us on in the second half. That is a much needed win. Three points then for us. So you can see our group. We do move up to seconds. Good place to be. Some groups have finished then. So Group A sees Uruguay and the host Russia through to round of 16. Egypt just falling a bit flat there with Mo, Mo Salah. He will not feature in the late rounds of the World Cup. Group B, it's Portugal and Spain that advance through. Level on points there. In Group C, France and Denmark are through. It's Peru and Australia. Australia with a poor showing in the World Cup this year. In Group D, it's a shocker. Argentina are out of the World Cup. There goes Lionel Messi and his hopes of lifting the World Cup. They lost their last game against Nigeria. They also lost to Croatia, who are looking really good at the moment. Very dominant. Argentina had a good start to the World Cup with that 3-1 win over Iceland, but they just didn't manage to kick on there. As expected, Brazil, three... Oh, they lost one game in their group. They are through anyway, and they are joined by Switzerland in the next round, the round of 16. Uh, in Group F, Germany are through. Three wins out of three. Dominant, as expected. I can see them probably going on and winning the World Cup. Mexico are through with them. Our group, well, we've got one more game to play, and it's against Belgium. And it is, again, kind of a must-win. A draw might be enough, but again, we'd have to rely on the game between Tunisia and Panama. We would need Panama to win, or maybe even a draw. We might be able to go through on goal difference. Anyway, join me for the next episode as we take on Belgium.